Hello everybody and welcome back to another What Is series with me, Mecha Will, your lovely host. Thank you guys for dropping by. Today we're going to be uh, showing off one of my all-time favorite games, again, of the past couple of years. Uh, if you guys have kept up to date with my What Is series, you'll notice that uh, all of these games are some of my favorite games. So you may understand... Uh, uh, kind of the gist of what my what is series is but if you guys don't know what the gist is it's basically a series where I like to show off games that uh, are very um, near and dear to my heart these are games that I, I kind of love and I like to kind of explain what they are um, and you know what the deal is about them why they're so great and hopefully I can entice you guys or at least show you guys why I think you should have this game in your home uh, this is this content's not sponsored by anybody this is just me kind of in my my actual opinions on this game. So this game's a really fun game. It's called Salt and Sanctuary. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and jump into to one of my characters I have here on the PS4 uh, that I've been playing. I just want to be able to show off uh, some of the different kinds of content in the system here. Uh, so right away, you may you guys maybe get a little bit of an information overload because you're jumping into a new game plus game. Uh, but to put it very simply, um, you know, this game is a basically a, a a love letter to the Dark Souls series. It's 2D Dark Souls, it's always been explained as 2D Dark Souls, but it does have its own unique uh, elements that make it a little bit different than Dark Souls. Uh, obviously the very first and most blinding one is that it is, uh, it's a 2D game. So, this game, you start off in a different location than I am, but this is very close to one of the starting spots that you'll be in, uh, and, the, and it's, it's a very massive RPG. Um, so you'll see a couple of reasons why, but we meet, you know, one of our first NPCs, so you can see kind of what the dialogue is like in this game. Uh, there's no voice acting, but there is dialogue in NPCs, and, uh, with a studio that's so small, it's actually made up of only two people, a husband and a wife, that created this game entirely from scratch by themselves, including music, artwork, design, dialogue, everything. Um, it's actually quite remarkable that they had so much being able to build into the game. So don't, don't take that, you know, and, uh, and assume that this game's not gonna be... Not gonna be that good. So anyway, we've uh, we've met this young character here, and uh, what the character starts off by telling you uh, initially is asking you a couple of questions. So it does have some branching like uh, question paths for you if you're into kind of dialogue that allows you to answer as as a player character. It gives you a little bit more options to role play as well. Um, God, there's just so much going on here. I, I can't really move without trying to talk about something else. But the branching uh, the branching comment paths are really cool um, to kind of help you out here. So. Uh, the next thing I'd like to state, we'll talk about stats and gear and stuff when we get inside. Um, everything, if you're a Dark Souls fan, you'll understand so much about this game from the get-go. Um, it has a lot of its own aspects, including its its combat mechanics as well, like parrying, um, you know, weapon swaps and, and stuff like that. So different rings that give you different attributes, very common RPG stuff. But you'll notice they'll also have uh, different things like, uh, like messages, what they call, you know, message in a bottles in, in this game. You can lay down for other players an asynchronous multiplayer um, style where you can leave different messages as well as the developers have different messages that you can have in these little bottles. So they'll give you different tips and tricks here that you can read in, the, in its own little, little language going on there. So I'm going to start off by saying like the reason I love this game so much, uh, you guys if you've watched my channel at all, you know I'm a massive fan of Dark Souls. Um, and this game kind of goes above and beyond to not only, you know, pay really well homage to, you know, what Dark Souls is and uh, what made Dark Souls so great, but it has so many, like, really unique, really, really well-finished touches to it. Lots of different little things that they paid attention to. And again, I told you, it's a two-person dev, uh, two, two dev team. The game itself is, you know, a good runtime of, like, maybe 20, 25 hours, depending on how you... Uh, Depending on how you you roll through it, uh, or maybe I'm sorry, hold up, that's probably a that's probably a little bit false. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe somewhere around 12, uh, 12 to 15 hours, depending on how long it takes you to get through it the first time. It took me about 14 hours, as you can see on my playthrough, but that's still, I mean, that's a hefty chunk for a game like this. And uh, you can definitely do a lot of different exploring and stuff like that. So we're about to make our way to our first, well, you'll find the first flare of this game. And again, if you play Dark Souls, you'll understand so much about the game. And I don't see that as a detriment, as, uh, as some people have stated. Uh, I kind of disagree quite a bit with that. I think it made the game so much better. Um, and it's coming from two fans of the game. So right here we come into what the bread and butter is, what basically the bonfires of this game are. So I'm going to be using some Dark Souls vernacular to explain a little bit of the game. Uh, but you guys can uh, kind of see for yourself what's going on. This, the sanctuaries are your place of rest. 
Uh, they're your place, they're your home, they're where you can summon different NPCs to your location to aid you, which is nice. Uh, uh, but they're also, uh, you know, where you can level up. So, we'll go ahead and show off one of these screens here uh, before we get into the actual uh, stat screen. So... Here on our left side, you can see we've got ourselves a player character name. So there is character customization. I'd love to show that off uh, with a different video. But basically, um, you can customize the way your character looks. You can customize the um, the area that your character comes from, which is really cool. Um, I, I really like that touch. It doesn't really affect too much in game except for the skin tone, um, much like the original Dark Souls where you could choose to be from Astora and different places like that. Uh, it does allow for that as well. And uh, it gives you a starting class that you can pick from. So again, like Dark Souls, it gives you about 8 to 10 starting classes, like a cleric, a knight, a thief, a warrior, that kind of stuff. And you can choose from those to get different stat boosts. You can see the main stats right there. That's strength, endurance, um, dexterity, willpower, magic, and wisdom. Um, and me, I always like to play the big old strength characters and then move on to magic and different playthroughs. But actually, a lot of different play styles in this game are viable. Although strength is, is very... Um, is very, I think, overpowered in this game. Uh, to be fair, once you get to the higher levels, you kind of start to crush a lot of the game. Uh, but I made it to level 80. The soft, the cap, I don't know if there is a cap. I think the cap, if anything, is over 600 for the levels. So lots of stuff to do and lots of different stuff to um, kind of look at. They go so far in depth as to, you know, as Dark Souls did with their stats to give equip burden and value, uh, including fat rolls and mid rolls and light rolls. Um, different kinds of defense, fire defense, uh, light, uh, lightning defense, uh, poison defense, holy defense, arcane defense, slash and strike. Um, your balance um, uh, is, I believe, uh, much like your poise in Dark Souls. Um, so you can see they go really in-depth to create massive articulate systems that make the combat and make going through this game super, super fun. Um, so not only do you have sort of that and that, we'll move to this last little pillar here, which is you have a covenant. Or you have types of covenants in these games, uh, which they call like your your uh, your order or your uh, you know what you what you devote yourself to. Um, so right now I'm de I'm devoted to a particular covenant that you find later on in the game, um, and you have different devotion levels, and they will give you different things for being devoted to a covenant, um, as well as like you know just showing off what the sanctuary is going to look like. Uh, and then you can see different stats like health, um, focus, and stamina. Focus is that little gray bar that you see below the green bar. Um, attack, uh, that's your DPS, and that's your uh, your drop rate. So there is different drops for the creatures in this game. And again, equip burden. So it's really tough to go through all of these all of these things right now. But you guys can see there's so many things uh, that are are kind of going through. Um, oh, that's right. That we're that are going through the game at the moment. Uh, but we'll, we'll again we'll show off what we can. Um, like I said, the reason this game is so brilliant is because it takes so much of Dark Souls, you know, so many of the really good parts about Dark Souls, and, and then also adds its own flair, but pays so much attention to detail that I, I love it. There's, it's a very, very, a game full of depth. Um, so here is our sanctuary. As you can see, it got all lighted up and pretty music started playing in the background. So your sanctuary is where you can call different NPCs, uh, and different, uh, characters and stuff too. You can see a, a a couple of, of options here. The first thing is make offering. Uh, so you get the ability to find certain things in the world. These little stone, um, I guess, avatars that you find in the world will, um, you know, bring certain people to the sanctuary. Now, there's lots of sanctuaries positioned throughout the game. So this actually becomes like a little fun strategy mini game um, of like, you know, where do you want to place, you know, because these things are finite resources. So if I wanted a stone cell sword, I only have a few of them. And uh, you have to place them in tactical positions for your sanctuaries, um, so you can figure out you know where to go, or you, so you can you make sure they're in the in the best spots to help you out you know for the harder stretches. So you can see here, offer the stone leader to an altar to summon a leader to the sanctuary. Uh, they also give you different bonuses depending on certain things. So this one gives you a salt gain bonus to sanctuary region, um, and this one will give you a shield block bonus to the, your sanctuary region as well as bring these NPCs in. So um, we might as well. Uh, you know, summon the the sword swordsman in here, and you can see the NPC roll right up immediately as we do that, including making his own his own little habitat there. So again, already so much happening. Now, the first thing that you you may have noticed them them talking about there is uh, it gives you a salt bonus. So if you're totally unfamiliar with this game, uh, salt is the currency of the game. It works a lot like souls do in Dark Souls. Basically, you can see my salt in the bottom. It's that little white pillar, and above is going to be a, a gold pillar, and that's our gold count. 
So there's actually two forms of currency in this game, which is the one thing that, that does uh, make it a little bit different from Dark Souls. Um, the salt is how you level up your character. Um, so you can use your salt to do, you know, different leveling and upgrades for yourself. And then the gold is how you buy equipment. So by separating the two, it actually, um, it gives a little bit of, of rest for, uh, you know, difficulty as far as that goes. Like, you don't lose everything. You still retain a lot of your gold. Every time you die, you'll lose all of your salt. And if you go back to the place where you found it, you have to kill the creature that kills you to take it back, much like Bloodborne. All this game came out uh, before Bloodborne, which is interesting. Uh, but then you also have to, uh, um, if there's no one there, you have to kill a salt bat to take back all your salt. But you also lose about 10% of your gold um, when doing that. So the gold is something that you still lose some chunks of, but you still keep it. And I think this is also a brilliant way uh, to design the game as well. Uh, because besides, you know, not losing everything, it also gives you, um, you know, in, in Dark Souls, you were very, you were motivated at um, very much so to spend all of your souls if you could all the time even buying gear that maybe you didn't necessarily want um, just because you wanted to get rid of your souls before a boss fight because you, you knew that you were going to lose it or you, you were you know almost aware that you know it was going to be very tough to move on so you sometimes ended up spending them on things that you probably didn't need to stock up on and with this it kind of gives you a little bit more balance and room to uh, grab the things that you really want to grab when you want to grab them and save up for certain things, uh, certain armor sets that you might be you know, interested in. So the last thing I want to show you before we move on to some of the gameplay uh, in the game is the level up system. So every time you level up, uh, you use salt, uh, as you can see, to level up. So, you know, we'll level, uh, it looks like two times here. And every time you level up, it'll give you what they call the black pearls. So that's that little black pearl you just saw happening there. And now I have two black pearls. And the black pearls are what you use to upgrade your stats. So I'm going to show off one of the funnest things, uh, the most fun things about the game, which is the tree of skill. You're kind of going to be blown away by how massive this, this skill tree is. So we'll take a look at it here. A lot of people think this is a mess, but I also think it's a really cool way to design it. So there's a lot of different types of weapons in the game, and due to certain upgrade paths, um, you can start to use different and better versions of the weapon. So we start right here at the middle. You get a Pulstice Pass, gain an additional healing potion. As you can see, it branches off into many different um, types of things. These are all perks and different things that you can get for your character, all surrounding different important uh, things that you may need. Uh, for instance, like level 4 class light armor. Um, so in between all of them are, you know, basically these buffer stats that you can you can stat up. So you'll see a lot of the same thing, like you know, gaining magic points, willpower, dexterity, light, you know, strength, um, depending on the path that you choose. So it's very intuitive that you choose the path that you want to play your character as. Uh, but it also, you know, there are ways to uh, kind of go back with those gray pearls you see in the in the top that says nine gray pearls. You can use those to go back if you go down a path that you want to actually kind of. Uh, respec a little bit on so I like that they give you that option as well but this this to me is just mind-blowing they 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 gave so much um, ah, okay here we are so I can zoom out a little bit and show you guys the main paths here in the game and uh, and how massive this skill tree is so when I told you um, and some of these even have like multiple points you can put into them when I told you that uh, that it is a it's a 600 or something 600 700 uh, level cap this is what it, this is why uh, because there's all these different things that you can get and you can max them out uh, but they are based very much on pathing so for me the first path that I went through was uh, you know I, I went ahead and got the ones that were quickly here class one assassin so you can wield daggers in the game class one uh, swords uh, and class one hammers uh, the swords gives you also the ability to two hand class one great swords so you can see again so much depth going on in the game which is just it's just freaking brilliant um, and it, it really let me kind of get um, invested in the game quite a bit uh, so there are bows there's whips there's daggers there's pole arms there's hammers there's axes there's uh, maces uh, there's you know light weapons like katanas there's as much as many weapons as you can you know imagine that you would find in actually a, a souls game or a bloodborne or, or something very similar all with different healing uh, potions that work very similarly to estus and uh, you know different defense stats including armor light armor um, heavy armor that kind of stuff I went down the heavy armor path here to uh, level 5 heavy armor the last thing that I want to point out about this stat screen which is cool I, I like that they also give you you know they show you what 
on the left side what stats affect you know different things and how they'll upgrade them just like Dark Souls but the last thing is that every single one of these nodes here has a little bit of lore built into it so beyond the fact that um, you know they give you different upgrade paths the cool thing is that every thing even if it's a stat upgrade or even if it's a uh, even if it's a class upgrade like moving to a class 3 heavy armor it also will give you three points of endurance so if you have to go through a certain class um, to get to a certain thing that you want, like maybe you didn't want this, maybe you wanted this health potion behind it, it is never a waste to get to different things because it also gives you three points of endurance. So I think that's another brilliant design choice that you never waste any of your points in here and that makes you feel really comfortable as a player um, as to upgrading and, and that kind of stuff. Um, but as far as, as, as I was talking about earlier, um, there's so much lore and backstory in this game that you can kind of spend a long time reading about, you know, different things from different books. You can see on the right in the green text, it's just, it, it's for everything, and it's all different. Uh, there is some sort of compilation, I think, online of a lot of this lore if you want to figure it out. Uh, but that's, that's the what's-its of that. So, combat. Let's move on and let's find a, you know, a more exciting part of the game while we're talking about it here. Um, so there's a lot of secrets hidden into the game. Um, you know, backtracking. There is no game map, which a lot of people think is probably the most, the biggest downside of this game. Um, they were doing it to kind of keep, you know, the map in mystery like Dark Souls. But since it's 2D, um, it kind of suffers a little bit with, you know, the confusion of not being able to, to navigate that well on a 2D map. Whereas for Dark Souls, um, it's, uh, Salt and Sanctuary is amazing. I agree, my fellow friend. Um, where, you know, it was a little bit easier to, to navigate in Dark Souls because of that. Um, and so here, let's show off some more things here. Uh, so, you know, there are shortcuts in the game, uh, a la Dark Souls and Demon Souls. It gives you a lot of different branching paths, which, again, it's got some really brilliant level design. They really encompassed a lot of what made Dark Souls great, which is nice. I'm going to be kind of melting through these enemies here because I've got a really overpowered weapon. Um, and you can pick up Pouches of Salt very much like Souls as well. Uh, but there's a lot of platforming in the game, more so than Dark Souls, as you'd expect with a 2D game. And very cool uh, touches. So, you know, across the game you'll also see those people hanging um, from the vines. Those are actually other player characters um, that have died in the area that you're about to enter. And so they'll change if you're playing online um, to show the different, like, different player characters that have died um, in a cool another asynchronous multiplayer um, setting. So I'll show off. I'm doing a two-handed weapon at the moment here, uh, but I also have a nice little set of, uh, of bow that I can switch to using L1. So they give you a way to do diff two different kinds of sets. Uh, and this, you know, lets you do different kinds of, of archery if you need to go ranged and gives you two different types of arrows as well. Uh, but for now, I, I, I'm here on this front. Uh, if I want to move, you know, to maybe something with a shield, you can see uh, some of the shields that I've that I've found here, again, with their own, uh, with their own lore dedicated to the different regions of the world and different player characters and stuff like that or boss characters and, and things well, let's say I, I put on this escuchion or whatever now i've got a sword a shield um using the uh the r2 button you can roll and uh using the l2 button you can block now i have a bit of a fat roll because i'm using a lot of these uh a lot of this stuff that's going on here but with this thing um uh, if you hold up your shields to block and click square you can parry so parrying, you'll see what visceral attacks kind of look like here. I'll see if I maybe I can do it um, well enough if I can time it. That didn't work out so well. So there's a visceral attack. Um, they're very satisfying. There's lots of blood and gore in the game. So if you like blood and gore, it's all in here. Uh, and we'll show off kind of the very first level design here and kind of get you guys through the game a little bit. Um, like I said, no map. But you got to play it careful. The game actually does get very difficult. Uh, and the game, you know, utilizes another interesting uh, way to kind of handle the game. Which is, they, um, up in the top left, they have, uh, you know, again, three different bars there. One is focus, uh, one is stamina, and one is health. And they actually start to cap your stamina depending on how tired or how much, how, or how damaged you are. So if you have gone a long time without resting at a sanctuary, your, your stamina actually starts to get capped. And that tends to make the game a little bit more difficult. Um, which is, it's very cool. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of difficulty to the game. Don't think that it's going to be a walk in the park. Um, it's, it's 2D, but there's, there's a lot of stuff that you need to, to worry about. There are some platforming sections that some people have complained about. Uh, I'm actually in love with all of the platforming in the game. I think it's very, um, very smooth. Uh, a lot of it's, you know, where you're going to go is, is very much controlled by you. 
so you can see already we've got multiple paths to go we got this little path here on the left path on the on the right we've got a little shortcut it looks like up there um, and different items placed around so here we'll move here get the pound of salt again another shortcut with a chest so you know hopefully you can guys can get the kind of idea right away about what kind of game this is uh, platformer um, action game but just pretty much 2d dark souls if you like dark souls at all I, you'll be in love with this game and speak about the game on more of a development side uh, I believe it was announced initially in 2014 um, over an open uh, PlayStation uh, kind of briefing uh, this is a PlayStation exclusive game although I believe it's also on PC uh, so I guess console exclusive and there are plans to bring it to Vita but um, as of yet there's no Vita uh, content so here is kind of one of the things if you run out of you know room here um, eventually uh, that guy will come back so it kind of helps you out there um, so yeah, we'll move here to the left kind of get some of these goodies um, and you can see different things like kicking the ladder to drop it down again just a very classic uh, very classic Dark Souls move it also takes a lot of inspiration from like you know uh, Metroidvania style games uh, like uh, you know Castlevania Metroid obviously um, which is nice throwing daggers torches there are a lot of areas in this game that are dark a la Dark Souls 2 that really do require a torch for you to get through so praise the sun for that uh, there are emotes in this game I believe Am I, I might be wrong about that here let me uh make sure I can check into some different different items here <coughs> oh, my my apologies for that um here we can go to the item list there's lots of different items that you have there's buffs so in this game you can add holy damage or fire damage or something like that so I'll use pitch fire for example just to show off kind of what it looks like so now I've got some fire damage on my weapon and you can put that in you know in your little quick belt here as well um, what else do we have here? Bells of Return. So, you know, lots of different armor sets, like I was saying earlier. I don't even have all of them, but I've got a good amount. So you can see that there's, there's quite a bit here to collect and discover. Um, you know, rings as well uh, for you to look at. I don't want to spoil too much, but I do want to show off a couple of things. There's also ch uh, what they call charms. Charms in the game um, give you different abilities uh, based on, you know, what they do for you. Kind of like an additional talisman slot. Um, one of the coolest design, or I guess one of the coolest things that I think they... They put a lot of effort and time into, and I'd really like to highlight is this bestiary. So here you can see every single enemy in the game, enemy type, um, including the different, you know, the different uh, boss types and everything like that. Um, all the way up to here, there's about 98 different types of enemies in this game, which is a huge amount. Um, and if you're interested in any of them, you can click on them, and it'll give you a whole backstory for the actual character. Uh, it'll show you what they look like, what the enemies in game look like, and it'll also give you a little list of what they drop. So I've already learned all of the drops for the Drowned Soldier, um, but I can see some of the lore for the creature here, and that's also where you get a lot of boss lore as well from, from this bestiary. Um, very much like looking into a boss soul um, type of deal. And then I've, I've always figured out that it drops locks of hair, it drops the shields. So if you're looking to, like, you know, complete... You know, you can see the one that has the question box there. It means that I haven't found what this guy, you know, does yet. So once you've farmed for all of them, it gives you a handy bestiary to tell you when you can stop farming, which is something that none of the Souls games do and none, no really other game does as well. So again, it's got its own little little great design choices that help it out. Um, so we're moving into a lot of a lot of stuff going on here. I'm going to skip a little bit uh, of, the, of the level, but there's a lot more um, built in here. Uh, there are, you know, fast attacks, strong attacks, there are jump attacks, uh, rolling attacks do exist. Um, basically every type of attack that you can think of from Dark Souls, and they are, you know, some of them are, are reused for weapons, of course, um, but there's, there's some very unique ones, uh, including weapons that you'll get from bosses' souls. There is transmutation as well in the game, um, like getting weapons from, from different boss enemies. So... There's not too much that I, I I haven't already explained about what the game, how the game plays, um, but what is the game? Really? The game itself, like I said earlier, it's a love letter to Dark Souls. It's a beautiful, you know, beautifully uh, designed game that's here to kind of show you, um, you know, two fans that make that wanted more of the Souls genre of content. We've seen that from other developers too, in games like Lords of the Fallen uh, and some of the more, uh, you know, three uh, 2D, 3D isometric games from Dark Souls that have came out. Um, earlier this year as well um, that have been trying to replicate this kind of thing so it's very you know Dark Souls is such a unique game that it inspired a genre 
and there's a reason for that. You know, obviously they're they're phenomenal games, um, but the uh, and and I guess their their lasting impact is is way greater than you know just the sum of their parts. Remember to dodge roll. So we're getting low on health here. Uh, we're gonna move real quickly to this, and uh, you know, you can see we've got blood vials here, which is our form of Estus. It does change depending on the covenant that you're in. Um, so let's just make sure we've got our healing on hand. Uh, we've got our Estus. Uh, we've got you know small red vials if we need them. Uh, but for the most part, we'll go ahead and keep it here. And as you can see, it moves your health up all the beat a little bit slower than Estus does as well. Again, to kind of just create a little bit more of a challenge. So we're going to move up and face one of the bosses and kind of cap the episode there. Uh, but I want to show you what the boss fights are like. So the very first boss, the Sodden Knight, uh, he is parryable. He is, uh, I'll show you, you know, some different features of him, but let's move on to pitch fire as well. So you can roll through him. You can see, you know, the bosses will get massive in this game as well. Again, a la Bloodborne style. You can see there's going to be lots of dodging um, techniques um, done and necessary as well. Um, don't feel too, don't get too comfortable around him because he does have, you know, different moves that will change up. And you'll see the variety of moves that happen here. All right. So we got to take it a, a little bit slower here. You do have to learn boss moves and stuff like that. It's really just the thrill that you get from Bar from Dark Souls. The same thing, but just in a 2D sense. Uh, you may turn around. They do have a little bit of stagger to them as well. So if you've got a high poise weapon, you can you can stagger them a little bit. So now, uh, you know, we're going to get closer and closer to, to hitting this boss's alternate move set. You can also see that, you know, the more damage I take, the more my health is starting to get capped as well so let's go ahead and heal because he's going to start to be doing a lot more damage here and a lot more complex combos you can see that as he also changed a little bit as well his eyes start to change uh, and trust me this boss is actually pretty difficult when you initially start to fight him so let's back up here and heal real quick right and we're very close to taking him out but he's starting to do a lot of damage so you do have to be careful uh, this is a new game plus fight here so again maybe that's not something i mentioned but new game plus exists uh in the game and gives you a reason to kind of continue playing the game even after the content is done so now he, he has a follow-up to his attack uh, but here we've taken him out and you can see kind of what it's like when you destroy bosses as well So they got their cool little vanquish sign. So the, the development team that did this, uh, uh, Ska Studios, they developed uh, different games like Charlie Murder uh, and, uh, you know, The Dishwasher and a couple of other um, popular games. Uh, but like I said, it's a husband and wife team, and they did all the programming, design, and arts. And like I said, the game ends up being around 12 to 15 hours of pure Dark Souls content, including New Game Plus. Uh, and they did, uh, they, they were planning on uh, doing some post-content release for... Uh, multiplayer. So the way multiplayer works is probably the last thing you're you're going to be interested in in this game. Uh, multiplayer is available um, locally. So if you have a person that's with you, um, you can play PvP with them, uh, and you can also play. Um, yeah, PvP does exist, and you can also play uh, a co-op all the way through the game. It's all available through the game. Uh, and basically you can play this game with a buddy, which again is another strong suit for this game. Um, and they were planning on implementing online uh, co-op and online PvP, but I don't think that's released yet. Um, if there's anybody that knows about that, they can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but we've made our way back to the Sanctuary here. You've seen a good chunk uh, of the first level of the game, including the first boss, but there's so much more in this game. And I really guys, I hope you guys decide to pick this game up because, you know, for its price range, which I think it's you know, somewhere around 15 to $20 for a game that's 2D Dark Souls, um, I was I was literally just chomping at the bit to get this game when it released. I got it on its midnight launch and immediately started playing it. And I'm just so in love with this game. So if this is your first time seeing it, hopefully that kind of convinced you maybe a little bit. You can see again some more some more different players uh, coming in and out of our of our area there. That's another player character um, going through their own game just like Dark Souls. But anyway, if you're a fan of Dark Souls at all, you will not be disappointed uh, 
through this game. I think you're going to really dig it. So that's my recommendation. Uh, if I had to give this game a rating, I'm not reviewing it right now, but you know, this game is, is quite easily like a 9 out of 10 for me. A couple of flaws, but a pretty, pretty perfect game. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, and uh, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been my What Is uh, series here. We do a lot of a lot of fun games. You can check out my previous episode if you want to check out uh, Shovel Knight a little bit, another beautiful uh, 2D um, platformer game, which is nice. But anyway, um, I hope you guys uh, liked the video. If you did, click on the like button. It really does help uh, small channels like me out. And if you want to subscribe, you'll get notified when you know more videos of, my come, uh, of mine come out. And you can also join the rest of the budding mech army. We're a growing breed. Uh, we'll be taking over YouTube soon. So uh, I, either way, I hope to see you guys... Uh, uh, later on, I thank you guys so much for dropping by the show.